You don't want to miss this review, folks. This is the 70 to 350 G lens from Sony. It is a small lens that packs a big punch. Let's get into the specifications. Okay, so on the specifications, we're talking about a focal length of 70 to 350. We just talked about that. It's, that's an equivalent of 105 millimeters to 525 millimeters in the, in the full frame world. It is an APS-C lens. It was designed for the APS-C world. However, you can still mount it on a full frame camera. You just have to use the APS-C mode. It has image stabilization. It's a 67 millimeter filter size. Uh, the maximum aperture is 6.3, the minimum aperture is 4.5, so it is a variable aperture lens. It has a minimum focus of 3.61 feet, so it's not a macro lens by any stretch of the imagination. It is designed for wildlife, sports, portraiture, things of that nature. It has 19 elements and 13 groups on the build. Uh, the diaphragm, the seven blade diaphragm, um, as I said, image stabilized. Um, the weight of this lens is only 1.38 pounds. And that I think is one of the biggest selling points of this lens. If you combine it with a, um, if you combine this lens with one of the lightweight APS-C bodies, you've got a really good walk around combination here. One of the things I really liked about this lens when I was using it was how it was so light. And you know, honestly, you could use this for wildlife photography. You could use it when you're out with your family and you're like, hey, you know, I don't want a lens that's gonna, you know, weigh me down and, and I'm just going out with my family. But if I happen to see something cool, if I happen to see a, a bird or you know a deer or you know something interesting, I can capture that with this lens and still take some great images of the family. Great lens for sports photography. Um, I really enjoyed shooting it. I have to say that this lens um, really surprised me. Uh, it comes in at around nine hundred dollars, uh, just shy of a thousand a thousand dollars. So the price is not super cheap. But when you compare it to the $2,000 lenses like the uh, Sony 200 to 600, it certainly comes in very, very well and performs very, very well. It does have optical uh, stabilization. Um, it it does not have an internal zoom, and you'll you'll notice that here. If I if I rack the zoom, you'll notice that the zoom extends very much like a. A Sigma. It reminds me a lot of a Sigma lens, honestly. Uh, when I was shooting this, I thought, you know, this feels just like my old, you know, 150 to 600, except much smaller. It's like a tiny version of that. Um, but I'll tell you what, you know, having that 525 millimeter equivalent on the APS-C gives you so much opportunity for various types of wildlife. I used it in Cataloochee Valley when I was testing it, uh, photographing the Rocky Mountain Elk here in North Carolina. It did an amazing job. Um, it, it, it seemed very fast to focus. Um, it had really just everything that I personally would need in the lens. As a matter of fact, I would think this would make a great backup lens. For me, I think it would make a great second lens if you had, you know, say you're doing a multi-camera setup shot for, for wildlife. Um, this would make a great you know, second body with a second lens to be able to do some of the trigger trapping and, you know, remote shooting and so forth. So the, the ring, the focus ring here, um, how do I want to say this? It, it's, it's smooth, um, works well, has good dampening. Uh, the, the zoom ring is, heavily dampened i'll just say it that way it's it's not going to be quick and easy necessarily it, you're not going to be able to rack this with video you're not going to be able to sit there and, and zoom in with video with this you're going to it's going to be causing all kind of issues so i wouldn't use it for video in that sense although i think it would make a good video um, lens i don't see any reason why it wouldn't 
It is a G lens, of course, there's a G stamped here on the side, it's not a G master. But I'm telling you, you know, Sony is making some very sharp lenses in this category. The two to 600 is a perfect example. Um, it has a lock button here on the side. So I can lock that at 70, but you can't lock it at any other focal length. So I thought that was a little bit odd. Why would you, I mean, I know why you would lock it at 70 because you don't want this to, you don't want the focus creep or it's, if it's hanging upside down on your chest here or something on a chest rig, you know, you don't want that coming loose and coming down, right? So I understand that. It would still be cool if it could lock at 200 and then at 350, go ahead and lock it. Cause maybe you're just always gonna be at 350 that day. Um, I think that would, would be a great addition to it. Um, what else can I say about the construction? The construction of this lens is plastic. You know, the hood is plastic. Uh, the body is plastic. Uh, on the rear, um, you do have some kind of metal here. It, it's not a I don't know. It's, it's some kind of alloy, some kind of alloy on the uh, on the rear of the lens, where it mounts to the camera. Um, you know, it's got the lens hood here. It just comes off. It's a bayonet style lens hood. Nothing to write home about. It is reversible for storage. Of course, you got the body cap, lens cap, everything you would expect to see <clears throat> on a lens. I mean, it's all there. But look how compact that is when it's, it's in your bag. I mean, it's just extremely compact. If I bring it back, kind of bring it up here next to me, you can see a lot better how compact it really is. I mean, this thing is, it's so light. Um, I think it's a really good contender. Um, let's go ahead and, and move on. I want to talk about some of the images I made and then I want to discuss, uh, I did some really quick lens chart work with it just to kind of see just how sharp it really is. Is it, is it super sharp? Is it, is it, uh, is it sharp at, at both the wide open aperture and F32? I wanted to see all that. So that's coming up and then we'll get into the conclusion. Okay. So we are here now to look at the image quality of the 70 to 350. And as we know, image quality is the first and most important aspect to a lens. So that's why I'm doing these quick lens charts for you. First thing is 350 millimeters, F6.3. Let's see how it does. We're looking at the whole frame here. I took a picture of just the center because it's such a, it's such a big lens on the A6700. And if I zoom in here tight, what you're going to see is really a high resolution lens. Um, it does it an amazing job. There's a tiny bit of chromatic aberration right here. I don't know if you can even see that. It's so small. Um, but look at how detailed this is. Now we've got some noise here. This is at uh, 4,000 ISO. But look at just how, how sharp it is. I was pleasantly surprised to see the sharpness of this lens. And really, in my mind, it really makes this a contender for really about anything. So we move on to the next one here. This one is at 200 millimeters at F6.3. So we zoom in here to the center. Again, let's let it load up here. Again, very sharp great resolution um again just minor fringing here uh, hardly even noticeable the s over here looks good in the eye chart um it's so sharp that it's picking up every dot in the printed paper so that should that should give you some indication um just how sharp this lens is now down here in the corners, you'll notice it's a little less sharp. I, I don't know if you can see that or not. It certainly is a little less sharp in the corners. Um, if I go, as we go to the center, it gets very, very sharp here. 
um, throughout the center from all the way from the top to the middle. If we go over here to the side though, if you look at this five, it's starting to lose some quality, but with a little bit of sharpening here, we can see the H is starting to uh, get a little bit blurry. And that's at 200 millimeters. Okay, and, and most people are not gonna be shooting at 200. You know, most of the time you're gonna be at 350 if you're doing wildlife photography. Okay, next image. Now we're at 100 millimeter or 99 millimeters, close enough. Um, and if you, if you look carefully here, you will see it looks pretty doggone good. I mean, it looks sharp corner to corner. Uh, certainly better than it was at 200, which is interesting. So we're seeing some variation. You can see a little bit of unsharpness here in the far corner. Um, so yeah, I guess it is just that one corner there. It looks like it has some, some sh just minor sharpness issues, nothing to write home about, nothing to get worried about, but <clears throat> yeah, very, very good. Okay. The next image, 70 millimeters and we are at six, they were at five, six here actually. And we will see about the same thing sharp contrast could be a little better but that might be me that might be the exposure i put on this one um again shooting this with the a6700 and the newest sony camera and this is only iso 2500 so a little better quality here you know how often are you going to i mean think how many times you're going to be shooting at iso 6400 and 3200 and you know 2000 or, or you know whatever this is a more realistic test i think of the lens so here is a little bit different scenario here i'm at 350 millimeters but i've cranked it all the way to f32 and it's still holding up very well. I was shocked. Um, we still see some of that unsharpness in the corners. But not bad. Not bad at all. Still a little bit of chromatic aberration here. Um, certainly not as sharp as it was at f6.3, but this is still usable. I could add some sharpening to this. Okay, that's all for the lens charts. Let's move along here to my first image. Okay, I was out photographing the, the elk in Catalucci, uh, Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And this guy right here was one of the, the bull elk contenders. And he's actually running, starting to break into his run here. And look how wild-eyed this guy is. Boy, he is he's is a weird-looking bull. Um, very unusual antlers here, but that's neither here nor there. Um, it did a great job of tracking. I mean, the A6700 did a great job of tracking. Um, the lens is sharp. I mean, I, I don't know how else to say that. It's sharp. You know, we got a little bit of noise here because, let's see, what are we at? ISO 500. Got a little bit of noise because we've got a, a APS-C camera, but I mean, guys, this is, I mean, maybe not quite as good as say a, you know, an A7R3 or something like that, but I would be happy with this. Next image. Here we've got a bull in the field here, and I've, I haven't done hardly any processing to this just beyond the basics. I think I pulled back the, uh, highlights on the side a little bit here but no cropping no i didn't add any contrast to this image or anything and if we go in here tight here we can see just how sharp this image is um, this lens is a keeper it's fast focusing in my opinion i wasn't able to do any birds in flight with it i apologize for that i just was not in a good position to do that with these with these shots but what i can tell you is you know it just looks good um 
I mean, contrast is good on, a, on this bright morning or afternoon, I think this was. Uh, contrast is good. The uh, um, sharpness is good. I mean, I don't, again, I'm not sure what, what else you could ask for. Next image, similar, uh, different angle on the, the one of the bull elks. Um, this is not the big bull elk, but he is one of the contenders. Um, again, sharpness is good. Uh, this is, I don't know if this is perfectly in focus. I guess it is. Um, but sharpness is good across the board. Get a little more depth of feel with that APS-C camera. And we are at 258 millimeters. So that just goes to show you that shots like this are possible all day long with this with this setup. It's just a good, it's it's a good all around wildlife camera or a lens. I I mean, honestly, <laughs> I'd like to add it to my to my kit just to have something lightweight to pull around with me, you know, just for Going to your kid's soccer game, you know, I mean, it's just having a backup for trips like this. I mean, I was very impressed with it. So that's all I had for the images. Let's move on. So in conclusion, what are the pros and cons of this 70 to 350? First of all, I think the fact that it is a 70 to 350, that indeed it is it is actually i mean if you want to think of it this way effectively a 525 millimeter telephoto lens that's the biggest pro the second biggest pro is it's only 1.38 pounds combine that with a, a camera that's only a one and a half pounds and you have a really lightweight rig that you could take anywhere you don't you don't look like a photographer necessarily it's it's very inconspicuous all pros the the you know if i had to complain about anything and i'm having a hard time complaining about anything with this uh the only thing i would say that's the big drawback with this is it's a 6.3 lens and you know we have to deal with this all the time now that's a common inexpensive lens uh, max aperture and so what can I say at, at 350 6.3 you are gonna have some low light issues you're gonna have to crank that ISO up I have to do that with my 2 to 600 Sony so that is what it is I would love to have seen this in a 4.5 to 5.6 I think that would have been a much more versatile uh, aperture However, I think the price is going to go through the roof. It's going to go from probably 900 to 1500 easily. Uh, so I, I, I just, I can't really complain about this lens in any way. It just, it fits the bill. If you're looking for an inex, you know, fairly quote inexpensive lens, this 70 to 350, if you've got an APS-C, this 70 to 350 is amazing. So I can't, I can't say enough good things about it. Um, who is this lens for? Let's talk about that for a minute. It's for sports photographers. It's for the guy going to a son's soccer game. It's for um, wildlife, nature. How would you use it in those scenarios? Um, certainly in the, on the nature side, you have a, a lens that could be used for distant landscapes. You have a lens that could be used for uh, um, you know, isolation shots of waterfalls and and streams and rocks and so forth. You've got on the wildlife side, of course, you've got a nice telephoto at, at a 525 millimeter equivalent. Um, you're gonna be able to photograph a lot of mammals. You're, you're gonna be able to take this into your backyard and shoot pho photograph birds. You're gonna be able to use this lens just as you would use a 200 to 600. The difference is with the two to 600, you put that on an APS-C camera and now you've got a big zoom. So, but either way, I mean, if you want light, compact, easy to carry, this is the way to go. If you've got that APS-C body, the A6600, A6500, A6700, 
you know, I, it's it's gonna be a good setup for you. Combined with the A6700, which is the camera I use this with, I saw no issues, no issues whatsoever. With one of the older, like A6300s, you might see some slowdowns with focus and, and that type of thing, but I'll tell you what, it it's just an amazing, I, I, you know, Sony just keeps knocking them out of the park. I know I sound like a Sony fanboy, and I guess in some ways I am. I really like Sony, but I think um, they seem to be doing everything right these days, and uh, I just can't say enough good things about it. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day and get out there and enjoy nature. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching this video. You know, if you really wanna help me out, and I hope you do, please click like and subscribe below. I know we all say this, but the fact is, there's nothing better that helps us than you being involved, than you watching these videos, and your support. Thanks a lot.